Shortly after seeing the title of this video, many of you already have your flaming keyboard and fingers up fire in the locked and loaded and ready to flame on position. And before I go out of my way to commit the ultimate of wrestling fan sins by violating the most holy of holy hardcore wrestling fan commandments, which is thou shalt not speak ill of anything involving or pertaining to Daniel Bryan, let me heap some praise upon the guy first. When I look at a Daniel Bryan, I look at a guy that could be an incredibly pivotal, important player for the WWE. That type of top guy that you maybe don't build the entire company around, but a guy that could be just as important as anybody else on the entire roster, as important as anybody else in the company. And when I look at that type of guy, those are the guys that sometimes have the most value and the most meaning are those guys that can make everybody around them better, I can really do a lot of different things and bring great versatility to the table. It's something that I look for out of a great mid-card or IC champion. It's something that we used to get a lot. You know, to me, the prototypical IC champion is that guy that's over with the fans, that can work in the ring, that can provide a real lift to the mid-card and sometimes can help compensate for what maybe the fans aren't getting out of the main event, the world title scene. A guy that has the versatility and flexibility to work on either side of the fence or at least work a variety of different angles and stories from a variety of different ways. A guy that has the ability to get his point across on the mic, get the fans to connect in the issue that he is experiencing. A guy that can help carry a story, which is especially important because that mid-card champion to me a lot of times should be a guy that is being utilized in his position to help prepare others to elevate them to the next level. And when I look at a guy in today's WWE, perhaps the best example of a guy that could be that prototypical IC champion, that prototypical MVP outside of maybe somebody like a Miz perhaps would be somebody even like a Daniel Bryan because I think he provides more versatility and flexibility in terms of what he can do. Um, as a result, I look at a Daniel Bryan and I think that he's a worthy Intercontinental Champion. He's somebody that I say he should be an Intercontinental Champion because I think he makes a much better Intercontinental Champion than a World Champion. Now, of course, the flaming keyboard fingers begin and persist. However, with that said, keep this in mind that just because everybody could potentially become a world champion doesn't mean everybody should be a world champion. And different talents fit in different slots on the card, and it's about getting the best that you can out of a guy. And when you look at a guy like Daniel Bryan, sometimes we're putting him at the very, very top as a world champion. You could be stifling him and taking away from some of the things that he can actually bring to the table. Therefore, you can get more out of him. He could become a bigger star as a mid-card champion, have more overall impact and entertainment value for the company as a whole in that mid-card position than he would in a top spot. He could still be a top guy, but when I look at a Daniel Bryan, again, seriously, I look at a guy that can be a prototypical I see champion. And I would love nothing more for him to be that guy. I would love nothing more for him to be one of those truly great mid-card IC champions at a time where God knows we've been searching for them for years and desperately begging for them to give us one. Daniel Bryan could be that guy. However, just because he can be that guy, just because maybe he should be that guy, doesn't mean that he will be that guy. Just because you like Daniel Bryan, just because you love Daniel Bryan, just because maybe Daniel Bryan is your favorite wrestler today, it doesn't change certain truths about the WWE, and it doesn't change certain truths about Daniel Bryan's current situation within the WWE. At the end of the day, you know this to be true even if you don't want to admit it to yourself or you don't want to see it because you want to believe something that is a total falsehood. You know damn good and well that at when all is said and done, Daniel Bryan will be a forgettable Intercontinental Champion. Boom! I said it. It's true, and you damn good and well know it. And based off of Daniel Bryan's history over the past year or so, and based off of the WWE's recent history, you should be stunned, frankly, if he was anything other than a forgettable Intercontinental Champion. Now, just because you don't want it to be true, just because you're wishing and hoping that it won't be true, doesn't mean that it won't end up being true. Just look again at the recent history with Daniel Bryan and the WWE. Go back to WrestleMania 30. 
You know, yes, you built a large portion of the WrestleMania 30 experience around Daniel Bryan and the Yes Movement and him overcoming the odds and being the Breakfast Club killer and having the great Yes moment at the end of the show. Here he is, the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. And how do we follow up on that? By entering him into a title feud with Kane. Kane. We go the CM Punk route with him, basically meaning that we treat him as a second-tier world champion with a second-tier level of importance compared to other people on the roster and expect for that to be a good thing. They put him into a title feud with Kane. They were trying to make him a forgettable world champion, but yet they're going to make him a memorable intercontinental champion? Child, please! They were using him as a pawn at one point in time in the stupid Brie Bella Stephanie McMahon garbage. And that was garbage. And then Daniel Bryan's gone all of this time. And they don't give you routine updates. You know, they bring him back at one pay-per-view, so he's in a pre-show segment with Bo fucking Dallas. And then he finally comes back. Here he is, 2015 Royal Rumble, and he's eliminated by Bray Wyatt like it's no big deal. They don't let him last to the Final Four. They don't, you know, really pump up his appearance for weeks and weeks and weeks. For Christ's sake, Sheamus got vignettes for weeks and weeks pumping up his appearance on the Raw after WrestleMania. Sheamus got more buildup for his return than Daniel fucking Bryan did. And then once he was eliminated like he was trash and didn't matter at the Royal Rumble, he was instantly inserted into a program with Roman Reigns to help get Roman Reigns over, to help Roman Reigns prepare for that main event at WrestleMania 31, not to have Daniel Bryan benefit in any way, shape, or form. But he's going to be an awesome IC champion in today's WWE. Well, let's even look at the buildup to that IC title ladder match at WrestleMania 31. For Christ's sakes, Daniel Bryan was at no point in time a featured part of that build-up to that match. He was outshined by R-Truth and the ultimate jobber of meaningless IC champions and Wade Barrett. Even his whole announcement to go into the match was done in a half-ass type of doesn't-fucking-matter type of way. And even on the road to that, once it's announced that he's going to be in the match, they have him jobbing to Dolph fucking Ziggler, getting taken out by Wade Barrett multiple times. People like R-Truth are being featured like they matter more. R-Truth! But now, because he went to WrestleMania 31, and he won the belt, we're going to overlook all of this? We're going to look past the history and just magically assume, because it's Daniel Bryan and all of his star-spangled freaking Go face bearded, yes, 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 them. That this is instantly going to change, and he's going to be great and awesome as a mid card type of champion. We couldn't even feature him like he was a big fucking deal when he was world champion. And most certainly couldn't do it on the road to him winning the said mid card championship at WrestleMania 31. And now, magically, because he's won it, you've planted some magic beans, and you're going to have a beanstalk of IC Championship awesomeness raid because Daniel Bryan says so? Holy Christ, all you have to do is look at the Raw after WrestleMania to see what the fuck's going to happen with Daniel Bryan as an Intercontinental Champion. He's featured in the second segment in that Dolph Ziggler spot. He didn't even get an entrance! He just won the IC title at WrestleMania, and the WWE followed that up by not even giving him a fucking entrance. Daniel Bryan, who gets one of the best unanimous, consistent babyface pops week in, week out with his entrances, they cut out his freaking entrance on a three-hour show. That's not just due to the WWE's ridiculous time management, which again is ridiculous and terrible and horribly bad. There's a reason that Daniel Bryan didn't even have his entrance shown on TV. He's thrown in as an afterthought in the second segment, doesn't even get to an entrance, and he's reduced to beating Dolph Ziggler again, a guy who he was losing to a few weeks before that. Dolph fucking Ziggler, who doesn't matter shit, beans nothing, and you know it. And then you have him getting beat down after that match by first Wade Barrett, and then a returning Sheamus with his fucking red rooster bastard child look. That's how you decide to feature your new Intercontinental Champion, his first full night as Intercontinental Champion. But you mean to tell me, 
at a time where he's thrown into the second segment. He doesn't even get an entrance where John Cena, they pump up his appearance all throughout the night, his open challenge, to where they give him a meaningful match with the Dean Ambrose that Cena actually gets my time before. Fucking Daniel Bryan doesn't even get a goddamn entrance. And it's the same type of repeat garbage match with Dolph Ziggler that so many of you jerk off to that you should be pissed off about. And then afterwards, he gets beat down by Barrett, a jobber of a former multiple-time IC champion, and the returning Sheamus. Sheamus! It's now 2015, and we're right back to 2012 again, where he's getting beat down by fucking Sheamus. Sheamus! Here are some inconvenient truths for you as to why Daniel Bryan will be, if this hasn't proven it to you already, a forgettable IC champion. First off, let's start off with this. The WWE couldn't book the IC title well when the World Heavyweight Championship was gone and out of the picture with Brock Lesnar. What in the bluest of blue fucks makes you think they would be able to book it well now that it's around Seth Rollins and it's going to be on television every single week? What in the WWE's recent history over the past five to seven years makes you think other than that occasional outlier or glimmer of hope that is quickly extinguished makes you think that they can book this fucking title at all? Just because they sit there and you hear reports of they want these titles to matter and they put the title on Bryan so that way they can value it and make it matter and make the championship and the champion matter doesn't mean it's going to fucking come true. What in the documented history makes you think it's going to be other... Anything other, excuse me, than the same old bullshit. The WWE can try and fool you because many of you are fools, but at the end of the day, what the fuck is any different? What makes this so special? I mean, seriously. And frankly, when you look at the WWE standpoint, they figure that you'll just be happy with Daniel Bryan having some type of championship, so why do they have to fucking try? And then they don't. I mean, so many of you seem to be perfectly fine and satisfied and get your jollies off to repetitive matches with him and Dolph Ziggler that don't matter, where these guys don't even get fucking entrances. Why the fuck should they try? Why the fuck would they think it matters? Because it doesn't. Because many of you will just sit there and be like, oh, it's awesome because it involves Daniel Bryan no matter how much of dumb shit it fucking is. Now a title that WWE doesn't care about is around a guy's waist that they don't care about. Again, they made him an afterthought in the build-up to the freaking IC title ladder match. They figured the best way to feature this guy the night after WrestleMania was to have him get a job or entrance, be reduced to beating a Dolph Ziggler, a guy who had beaten him just recently before that, and then have him get beat down by first wave bearer and then a fucking returning Sheamus. We're back on the Sheamus shit again. And you think the WWE gives a fuck about Daniel Bryan? You think they give a fuck about that IC championship? And then furthermore, when it comes to the whole build of Daniel Bryan you could, as an IC champion, you can clearly see where this is going to go. And newsflash, it's not just about the matches. It takes more than matches to make a champion, and especially make a good, effective mid-card champion. And when Daniel Bryan could do so much more, and should be allowed to do so much more, you could just see it coming now. They've got Rollins, who they care about as a world champion. They're going to make sure that he has a story. Cena's getting a story. Cena always gets a story. And that's why he is going to be a U.S. champion that will be in some ways productive, but in some ways counterproductive. But at least he'll matter because the WWE will care to feature him like he matters because they care about him. They don't care about Daniel Bryan. They don't care about that title. And especially now, with having to book that world title strongly, with Rollins actually having it on TV every week, where they can't just forget about it with Lesnar being away, and the fact now that Cena has one of the two mid-card titles being the U.S. champion, where the hell does that leave the IC title? I mean, seriously. It's going to be the same old repetitive, regurgitated match, 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 commentary, match, match format that the bullshit always fucking is. And that's exactly what it's going to be. You know, there's going to be no attempt at character development. There's going to be no attempt at creating a real issue. There's going to be no attempt at creating a real story or doing anything innovative or creative whatsoever. It's going to be the same old type of boring crap. And then when it comes to the pay-per-views, you asshats will sit there and overrate the fuck out of the match because it involves Daniel Bryan. And the whole time you'll miss out on the whole point, which is that it's stupid. And that it's stupid that a guy that can mean so much more and could do so much more is being relegated to being treated like a mid-card champion like so many other guys have been before. 
Daniel Bryan is going to be a forgettable IC champion. You know it, I know it. This company doesn't like him for whatever reason. They don't care about him for whatever reason. They most certainly now, with Rollins as world champion and the belt being back on TV every week and Cena being U.S. champion, aren't going to book Daniel Bryan at that same level. They're going to have to make sure that they get their point across. And they most certainly aren't going to have the en energy or the effort or desire to be able to try and make a third belt matter when they can barely make two belts fucking matter to begin with. I'm glad that so many of you think that Daniel Bryan is going to be this great, memorable Intercontinental Champion. But they sent Sheamus at him. We're back to that shit again. It's going to be the same old boring, lame-ass match, match, match type of format that we so often get with the IC Champion. And just because it's Daniel Bryan, that doesn't make it better. That doesn't mean it's good. It makes it bullshit. And it makes it even more bullshit. Ding dong, dumb dicks. It's not just about the fucking matches. It's about more than that. And if anybody should be pissed off, it should be Daniel Bryan fans. Not only should you be pissed off that he's being relegated to carrying this third tier title in a two title company... And I only say two title now because Cena is the U.S. champion, so that belt's going to mean as much, if not more, than the freaking world title in a way. You should be pissed off at the fact that he's going to be treated like every other ham and egger. Oh, let's give it a turn here with this guy carrying this title, and it won't mean shit. And if you believe it's really going to mean shit, then I hope you enjoy living in your fantasy land because at the end of the day, the inevitable truth is... They don't care about Daniel Bryan. They don't care about that IC title. Now that Rollins has the title on TV every week, they're going to have to book for that. They couldn't even book the IC title well when the World Championship wasn't there. What the fuck makes you think they'd magically be able to do it all of a sudden now? And now certainly because Cena being a mid-card champion himself, they're not going to want Daniel Bryan to overshadow him in any way, shape, or form. So you know Daniel Bryan's going to play second fiddle to fucking Cena, just like everybody else in that company is going to play fucking second fiddle to Cena. What the fuck makes you think that Daniel Bryan's going to be anything other than a forgettable Intercontinental Champion?